Well, hello and welcome to the Vintage Electronics channel. Today we're going to ask ourselves the age-old question, was the 8-track tape really as bad as we remember? Because on paper, it looks like it should be better than a cassette tape. Let's find out. So what's this on paper I'm talking about? Well, I've got you intrigued, don't I? And I was too. So we all know that with analog tape, one of the things that will increase the quality of the recording is to increase the speed of the tape. Like a reel-to-reel -reel recorder, normally we record at three and three quarters, seven and a half inches per second, 15 inches per second, or even 30 inches per second. And we know that the faster we go, the higher our sound quality is. Now a normal compact cassette tape runs at one and seven eighths inches per second. And we know how tapes sound. In fact, I just did a video about the quality of the tape and I thought it was really, really good. So if this is an inch and seven eighths, what does an eight track run at? Well, it turns out that it runs at three and three quarters inches per second, which is double the speed of the cassette. So in theory, it should sound better, right? Well, we all remember eight tracks being terrible. So I'm not going to use a pre-recorded mass-produced 8-track for this comparison. I think we need to get a blank 8-track, an 8-track recorder, a blank cassette, and a cassette recorder, and record some music on both and compare them to the original file and see if the 8-track's bad reputation is deserved or not. Alright, well, like I said, I am not going to use a pre-recorded 8-track cassette for this comparison, but I do want to use this one to kind of talk through how an 8-track actually works. We're all familiar with a compact cassette, the two reels, and the way the tape travels through the mechanism. The 8-tracks are actually completely different. There's a single reel in here that is an infinite loop, so there's no, no beginning and no end, and it just continues around and around and around in a circle. Now on the top of the cassette, you've got an area here with some foam, that's where the play and record head would push in, your erase head would end up here, you've got the pinch roller built into the cassette itself, and then the cap stand will actually end up against that to advance the tape through. Uh, the tracks are laid out in four programs, and they're stereo programs, so there's two channels per program, so that is your eight tracks, that's where that comes from. Now on a lot of songs, uh, the way the eight tracks were laid out, you'd actually have songs that would actually end up having to finish up on another track. So you'd have a fade out at the end of one and it would fade back in at the beginning of the next track when the head would advance down. So not the best thing in the world, but hey, that's that's the way they work. So for our comparison, I've actually bought a new old stock, actually two new old stock eight track cartridges. I wanted to make sure I had an extra in case there was something wrong with one of them. And I've got a brand new chrome cassette tape that we're going to use for comparison. And for the recorder, for the 8-tracks, we're going to use this. This is a Craig 8-track stereo recorder. A pretty decent little unit. It's got dual VU meters, independent control, the right and left recording levels. Nice little soft touch buttons on the front of it. Fast forward, and you notice no rewind because you can't rewind one of those endless loops. So this is what we're going to use to record our 8-tracks. And for the cassettes, we're going to use my Tascam 112, which is my go-to deck for any kind of video and, and quick recording work. I love it. Uh, I actually did a video not too long ago about the quality of the cassette. If you want to see this thing in a little bit more action, make sure you check out that video. I'll try to make sure to put a card right above here so you can check that out after you're done with this video. But anyway, we're going to be using this one to record it. We're not going to use any noise reduction or anything else that the 8-track doesn't have. We're just going to go tape to tape on this to do our comparison.
here's one of the reasons the 8-track got a bad name. Yeah, we ended up uh, feeding all of the tape into the machine. Looks like the uh, original splice, which also holds the sensor for the program, looks like it uh, came loose and all the tape decided it was going to unwind inside of the uh, deck. So that's one point down for the 8-track uh, right now. Let's see if we can try this again. All right, after our mishap, I was able to record onto the other blank 8-track and our cassette. So let's line them up side by side and see if we can hear any difference. Well, I think those recordings probably speak for themselves. And we had our share of problems, like a lot of people had with 8-tracks back in the day. There's really nothing you can do with this but throw it away. You can't really re-spool it. So let's talk about the quality of those recordings. Now, we had talked before about the 8-track recording at double the speed of a cassette. Why doesn't it sound as good or better? Well, that's because we're looking at it through a lens of the cassette back to this when we need to look at it in a historical context. When this came out in the early 70s, the cassette wasn't really used very much for audio recording, for music anyway. It was more of a dictation device. So you were in the era of reel-to-reel -reel recorders in the home, and those recorded at 7.5 inches per second most of the time, and a good pre-recorded tape would be at 7.5 inches per second. So this is half the speed of a pre-recorded reel-to-reel. -reel. Now they did make them at three and three quarters inches, but for a, a good quality one, this was half the speed. And I think this format died off because of the fact that you can't repair them when they do this. Your, your songs would be cut up in between the different tracks. Uh, they were just poorly thought out and they died off before the technology could really be enhanced and revised like what happened with the cassette. It evolved from just a dictation device to a really high quality recording format. So I think that's really the story of the 8-track altogether was a good idea, poorly executed, and it is just as bad as we remember, and I'm going to say maybe even just a little bit worse. So there you go. That's the 8-track and the cassette tape compared. Let me know what you think. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. Hit the like button on the video and ring the bell so you can get notifications when we come out with new ones. And we'll see you next time.